Hi, this is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing with our weight loss vlog. This is a corrected video. Uh, one of you very astutely saw that Lorcaserin has been recalled by the FDA in February, so I am redoing this. This is medications that can be used to help with weight loss. So if you're going to be doing either a telemed visit or discussing with your physician or provider medications that are options for you to lose weight, this is the list. Um, the, the other thing I would just want to touch base on is the protective effect of a normal BMI with coronavirus. Coronavirus is going to be with us for a while, and I think we should look at following a healthy diet just the same way as you look at uh, putting a face mask on and washing your hands. We saw some data come out of NYU just a few days ago. Patients who are less than 60 years old uh, generally are felt to be in a... Uh, uh, in a lower risk category with COVID-19 infection. However, we do see that the higher the BMI, the more the risk of being admitted to either acute care or to critical care. And if you can see particularly a BMI of over 35, they have 3.6 times uh, a higher risk compared to a normal BMI of being admitted to critical care. So I encourage you to flip this on its head and remember that that means your striving to get to a normal BMI is protective to you when compared with a higher BMI. So, um, so let's go through now the medications. These are the medications that are currently available once you either if you do a telemedicine visit to your physician or if you uh, go in for a visit and you want to discuss what the options are. So let's go through these. So um, Phentermine is, we have done videos on this before, one of the oldest and uh, most commonly used medications. It is an adrenergic agonist, meaning it locks into those receptors that um, make you kind of that fight or flight mechanism if you will. It's kind of a, um, uh, increasing your alertness. Uh, so, and it blunts appetite because think about what do you want to have going on if you're uh, running from the tiger or that. You, you don't want to be hungry and you want to be really alert. And um, the, the side effects to be aware of because of this are sometimes increased heart rate and also dry mouth is something that people notice a lot. We do monitor heart rate and blood pressure when we start people on Phentermine, and it's very important uh, that you jump through those hoops and do it the right way. The FDA has approved Phentermine for three months all by itself, and for chronic use under the combination drug as Qsimia, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Phentermine, you can use it for longer than three months at a time. That's considered off-label use, but it's done very uh, commonly, particularly when the benefit is felt to really outweigh the risk, when people are doing really well with it. You do start to develop a little bit of a tolerance to the effects of Phentermine after a while. So often I will have people um, use it in kind of a pulse dose fashion, just on the weekends or even every other day. It is a Schedule three. Uh, medication in New York State, so uh, it is controlled, and you do have to, again, uh, be very uh, diligent about jumping through the hoops uh, of documentation as, uh, as far as your provider goes and cooperating with them on that. So these are all medications that you're going to talk to your provider or your physician about. Orlistat is a medication that works by a completely different mechanism. It blocks lipase, your gastric uh, lipase and pancreatic lipase. Lipase is an enzyme that breaks down fat so that you can absorb it. So if you block that enzyme, then you're not going to absorb fat. This has a little bit of a negative feedback loop, if you will, because if you take Orlistat and then you eat fatty foods, the side effects are that you're going to have gas and oily stool. Yuck. So that is a, kind of a really good behavioral reinforcement in terms of not eating foods that you shouldn't be eating anyway. So that's how Orlistat works. That's been out for a long time. Qsimia is the brand name, and this combines generic phentermine with topiramate. And this medication is um, often expensive. So what you'll find is physicians will, 
or providers will sometimes write it in its two generic components. That is also considered off-label use to be doing it that way uh, because it's not in the exact doses that was approved by the FDA. The, we already went over the potential side effects of fentramine. Topiramate is an interesting medication. It used to be initially used for as a medication for seizure and then for migraine, and then they realized that people were starting to lose weight when they would take it. So it was restudied in this combination. So the it also is sometimes used a bit off-label for mood. And so you can have things occur with mood changes on topiramate, both good and bad. Uh, I've seen it happen both ways. The other side effect to know about with topiramate is kidney stone formation. It can increase your risk of kidney stone formation. And it is teratogenic, so you cannot be using topiramate if you're of uh, reproductive age and that there's any risk that you're currently pregnant. So those are the issues around Qsimia. Again, often physicians will write for both of them separately because the cost for branded Qsimia is a bit prohibitive for people most of the time. Contrave is a completely different medication. Contrave is the brand name. It is generic bupropion, which you may also know as Wellbutrin, which is an antidepressant, and naltrexone, which is used for opiate addiction. So this combination of medication uh, tends to, again, be a bit more activating. That's what bupropion does primarily. Bupropion helps with mood. Um, it, it helps you kind of bring yourself up a little bit, increases motivation. And naltrexone blunts opiate receptors, so that's dopamine production. Dopamine is the gratification neurotransmitter in your brain. And so to the extent that food is an addiction, naltrexone kind of blunts that addicted response. Now, that being said, the side effects to know about with this are often kind of headache and also insomnia, so feeling a bit too activated. That's why it's very important that it's taken first thing in the morning. Same thing with Contrave. Often the cost is prohibitive to write for the branded, so people often will write for the generic separately. And the last one is Saxenda is the brand name. Liraglutide is the generic. This is a GLP-1 agonist. We won't really go into the whole mechanics of it, but it actually uh, is used under a different name, Victoza, uh, for type 2 diabetes. And it acts on um, glucagon-like polypeptide 1. Uh, it's, it's a mimic of that or a similar molecule. So it's going to help with your diabetes control, lower your sugar, um, slow your gastric gastric emptying. Um, the the uh, the side effects though sometimes are that people will feel nauseated. Uh, uh, to, if you follow that to an extreme, perhaps if you're either very sensitive to it or if you take uh, if the dose goes up more than you really uh, can handle, you may make, have some vomiting. So this is a medication that's actually you start it low and people usually have no problems with it. It blunts their appetite and you go up in very slow increments on the pen. It's a daily auto injector pen and for people who aren't used to injecting medications that may sound intimidating but it's like a really tiny needle like the tiniest one you can imagine and it's an auto injector pen so you just dial it in and you kind of alcohol wipe off the location and it's just under the skin and you just click the button and it's a little pinch and that's it and it's once a day. So it works very well and it's a very nice option for people with type 2 diabetes because often type 2 diabetes, some of the older medications have weight gain as a side effect and really if you're going to choose a medication and you have two type, type 2 diabetes, you want to choose a medication that will help with weight loss. So it was re remarketed under the name Saxenda very specifically and approved by the FDA for weight loss. So these are the medications. This has been a whirlwind tour of weight loss medications. And again, kudos to the person who uh, caught my uh, lorcasserin uh, that I included that when it, that was taken off just in February. So thank you for that. Um, so very important information. Getting down to your ideal BMI is very healthy for you in many different ways. Reversing your type 2 diabetes, um, bringing your blood pressure down, and now really importantly we see, you know, this has impact as far as uh, susceptibility to 
uh, illness from coronavirus. So you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. Um, keep sticking to small daily habits that are going to help you um, help you progress. Okay? Thank you.